Hi guys and welcome to U-Wrench. Today we are looking at ground fault issues and more specifically how to diagnose them. Let's take a look. When it comes to ground faults there are literally loads of areas that could be your cause for concern. Chances are you've probably gone onto a forum, someone's mentioned a possible ground fault in a certain area of your car and you're wondering how do I test that. Obviously in this video we can't show you how to test every single uh, component in your car uh, for a possible ground fault. However we'll show you the basic process in this car so if you've got an idea where your ground fault probably is then this is the process that you're going to need to test any ground fault in the car. And to enable us to track down ground faults in your car's electrical system, you are definitely going to need to get a multimeter. It does not have to be a flashy one, it can be the cheapest one you can possibly find. But this is an essential piece of kit. Uh, if you haven't already got one of these, we'll add some links for you to some of the best deals on Amazon in the video description below. So the very, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, test the battery with the engine off. So let's do that. So a standard car's electrical system is 12 volts. So on a multimeter, on the voltage side, I want to turn this to the closest setting, which is usually 20 volts. Next, what we want to do is take our negative side of our multimeter, put that onto the terminal and the positive onto the other side and take our reading. So here we can see we are at 12.14. Now 12.14s are a little bit low, that will indicate that this battery is approximately around half charged currently. Uh, ideally you want to see kind of 12.4 to 12.6, uh, that would be uh, the ideal range, but hopefully when you run that test you're looking at uh, mid 12 volts for your resting battery. So now we have the resting battery uh, voltage as our point of reference, we can just simply repeat that test uh, uh, connecting the uh, positive uh, side of our multimeter onto the positive side of the battery, but instead of doing the negative uh, side of the multimeter onto the negative post of the battery, instead of that we're going to put this onto the grounding point on the car that we want to test. So here we can see uh, we have one of the uh, grounding points and uh, if you note on this the uh, the head of that little bolt is uh, painted the same uh, color as the body so when you put the um, negative um, side of your uh, tester down there don't put it onto the uh, red side just there because it won't go through the paint instead what we want to do is touch it onto the uh, the actual bare metal just there so as i touch that on to that grounding point we'll see that we're getting the full 12.14 uh, which is the same as our resting battery. So that's a good indication that there's no fault on that particular point. So then what you can do is you can just uh, repeat that exact same uh, test on anything that you suspect might be the uh, possible cause of your ground fault. Now as an example for you, uh, we know uh, we've recently um, swapped this uh, engine mount, um, disassembled and reassembled just down there, and we noted that the uh, ground strap had broken on that mount. So we're expecting to see a fault here, so let's test that. So positive onto the positive, and then we'll touch that onto the bolt on the top and see what reading we get. So there, there you can see. Uh, we're getting nowhere near well, what we should, 0 0.2526, somewhere around there, and we were on 12.14. So that's a good illustration, of course, as we know in this particular instance that there is a grounding issue to that mount. Now the second stage of this test is to repeat this exact same process, uh, but this time we're going to do it with the engine running. And so you're going to start again by taking the reading from your battery. And the reason why you need to also do it with the engine running is when the uh, engine's running your alternator will be recharging your battery and so the uh, voltage uh, the reading that you'll get will be considerably higher. And what you might find is you might find an electrical fault, uh, a grounding fault somewhere that seems okay, it's kind of sitting okay on the resting, uh, resting battery voltage. However when you then start the engine and repeat that test because you're putting that extra power in through the system uh, that can be that little test between if you've got like a loose connection or something like that it might just be be able to take 12, 12.5, start going up to mid 14s and it might struggle. So you should always repeat this test. First of all, you do it with the uh, engine off and then repeat it uh, with the engine running. So let's repeat our initial test. Now we can see uh, the battery has, with the engine running, 14.33 volts. Now the voltage that you have with the battery running can vary a little bit, but as a general guideline you should be seeing somewhere between 13.7 and 14.7. So 
Now I'm going to repeat the test on the uh, little grounding point that we suspect that there's no issue with, so we should have the same reading. There we go, so that's looking good. And then we'll do that test again on the engine mount, which we know has a um, faulty ground strap. See, you see that power is trying to get through, but see that drop. There you go, so we're definitely getting an issue there, uh, as suspected. So it really is that simple. All you need to do is take that voltage uh, beforehand and then repeat it again uh, with the engine running. And if you've got a, a ground fault, then that should show very, very clearly on your multimeter. Now when you run your particular test your results might not be quite as dramatic as ours because we know for example that we definitely have a, a, a grounding issue in that engine mount. Now as you run your test you ideally want to see that you're getting the, uh, the identical reading as you move around the various different uh, grounding points uh, in your engine bay or where, wherever it is in the car that you're testing. If you see a drop on any of your points of 0.4 volts or more then that's going to be pointing you in the direction of a potential problem on that particular grounding point. So there we have it guys, that is the process that is used to track down potential grounding faults in your car's electrical system. If this video has been helpful for you, can you please do us a quick, quick favour before you leave us, please be sure to hit that like button and also can, please consider subscribing, we have loads more great DIY content waiting for you to check out. We appreciate it guys, we'll see you again.